Colin, walk us through kind of the idea of how much money these companies are going to have to put into the EV landmark and why do they need each other? Yeah, I mean, both of these companies have actually been laggards so far in, in electric vehicles. So they're certainly behind groups like Volkswagen or Nissan or, of course, Tesla. But what you've seen from both of them in the last few years is, uh, really in the last year, that they've announced a really big upcoming push, spending several billions of dollars. So F PSA has said, look, we're going to launch 15 new uh, EVs or a total of 15 EVs by 2021. FCA saying 32 different EVs by 2022. That's going to cost a lot of money. So I think that's part of the motivation for this deal, definitely. Uh, so what does it wind up meaning for uh, the, the pace at which they can do this? Because if you take a look at, say, EVs as a percentage of sales, it's still the Chinese companies like Geely, BYD, that are just crushing it. Uh, how do they compete? It's still going to take some time. But one of the things you have is that in Europe, the CO2 regulations are really forcing automakers into this. So they have to start selling EVs next year, otherwise they're going to start facing fines. So what you're about to see is actually a big push from pretty much all the European automakers. Anybody who's selling EVs in Europe are uh, really trying to up those numbers in the next few years. So you're going to see that from PSA. They've got a couple models coming out next year. You're also going to see that from FCA. The FCA is a bit further behind, and that's actually why they've had this tie-up with Tesla to try and improve their overall CO2 emissions and, and reduce the fines they might face otherwise.